Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight I'll be presenting my last and final speech for this semester for the public speaking course. And uh, the topic that I've chosen tonight would be uh, about gun control. Uh, I'm sure we've all watched the news recently uh, with the Sandy Hook shooting. And our heart goes to the victims and their families uh, that were affected uh, by this incident. Uh, it's quite a tragic uh, event when we have young children going on school and just not returning home. And the tragedy also becomes worse uh, when it was not long ago that we've had another incident that we didn't even get a chance to forget about. Um, early or mid last year, we did have a shooting event uh, also in the uh, theater uh, that did kill um, around 58 people and injured maybe uh, a dozen more. Um, all these, um, or there, there was a common theme in both events where we see that um, assault rifles and semi-automated weapons are being used in both cases. And uh, those are types of weapons that are known to be able to shoot uh, quite um, um, a lot of number of bullets in a very short period of time. And I'm sure you can imagine that uh, with such setup that you would have a, a very high number of fatalities uh, when compared to you just using a regular pistol or a handheld gun. Um, that being said, this triggers a debate uh, about whether or not it is time to actually have another debate about gun control and um, is it the time to just stop and think are our current regulations and laws effectively working um, or are they not and if not what do we need to do in order to try to prevent these types of tragics uh, or tragedies from happening in the future. Um, I would personally go ahead and say that uh, gun control is immensely needed now uh, more than ever in light of these recent incidents and if we are to prevent it from happening in the future it is time for us to have this debate now. Similar to any other debate, there are always two sides of the story, and there are always uh, proponents and opponents of any measure. Uh, those who propose, or actually, let's start with the opposition first. Um, those who oppose gun control cite two main reasons uh, for their argument. Uh, number one being that they are afraid of the impact of uh, strict gun controls on the uh, individual rights and they are worried or concerned that this would infringe on the Second Amendment, which uh, um, basically protects as a constitutional right uh, that uh, right of every American to uh, bear arms. Uh, in addition to that, you also have fierce opposition from the National Rifle Association uh, and um, a group of people that are participating in an industry that brings revenue of about $32 billion every year. Um, the other side of the argument, um, which I am personally for, believes that those two claims uh, can be uh, answered to or rebutted. Um, for one, the um, impact on individual rights does not really go uh, into bearing any types of arms. It's into certain types that are known to have uh, more um, fatalities and that are known to be more dangerous and that are less likely to be used or needed by a regular citizen just trying to protect himself. Uh, in addition to that, if we were to look at recent history, we would realize that in 1994, we had what was known as the Violent Crime and Law Enforcement Act. And what this did is that it basically put a ban on 19 types of assault weapons uh, back then. and. Um, it lasted for 10 years. Uh, the problem is that it came with something called the uh, Sunset Clause. And what the Sunset Clause basically um, um, establishes that this law would be repealed in 10 years unless Congress wished for it to be reinstated. So in 2004, uh, particularly in September 13th, the law itself was repealed. Unfortunately, back then, Congress did not have the will or the ability to reinstate the act and extend the, uh, uh, what was known back then as the Assault uh, Weapon Ban or the Violent Crime Law and Enforcement Act. So if we are to uh, look at this uh, law, we would realize that the current debate is trying to establish a law that we have already had, nothing new. Um, it's basically a measure that we believe has helped protect a lot of people when it was fully enacted. Uh, in addition to that, um, we also have uh, some support, ex um, we, we actually do have some existing flaws in, in the current system, 
uh, where you have, for example, gun shows where people can just show up and buy any gun that they do like, and um, there would be no background checks, not even name check, and the vendors in the gun shows are not obligated by any means to perform any background checks uh, to make sure that the person that they are selling the weapons to doesn't even have a license to bear arms. So what we need to be doing right now is first reinstate a law that we've already had before and look into current loopholes in our system by establishing um, a national uh, sort of uh, screening system or a background check system where anybody who wants to bear arms, uh, who wants to use uh, his Second Amendment right, can just be checked before uh, uh, they go ahead and do so. If we are uh, to also respond to the uh, 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 opponents of the uh, current plans, uh, we are to tell them that there is a good correlation or a direct correlation between the uh, uh, level of, of, of um, uh, gun control uh, put in place and the number of uh, firearm uh, crime rate. So if we have some very interesting uh, interesting statistics here that I did find on the National Institution uh, of Justice and um, basically they are looking at the firearm crime rate in 1993 and back then that was about 7.3 percent. Um, we also have a number for firearm victims tallied at 1.5 million people. That This is 1.5 million people either killed or injured by a firearm crime. In 2004, actually, sorry, um, the year where the uh, Violent Crime Law and Enforcement Act was repealed, we are looking at a firearm crime rate of 1.9% only, and number of victims affected by firearms of 500,000 or half a million. So compare those two figures together, and you can see the drastic change that having this law in place has uh, uh, done for us. We, the numbers have been cut by about two-thirds, um, going down from 7.3% uh, firearm crime rate to 1.9. Uh, you also have firearm victims going from 1.5 to about half a million. Um, and, and that's one-third of what it was before in 10 years when we did have a law in, in, in place. Uh, if we were compared to figures from 2004 to 2011, we would notice that they are still at the same level. Nothing has changed. We uh, are looking at 1.8 percent crime rate in 2011, and 467 firearm victims. Um, although that this is lower than what it was in 1993, but still we're talking about half a million people being impacted by this. It could be any one of us. It could be me. It could be you. And, and I'm sure that this counts the 26 people that were killed in Sandy Hook. Uh, or the 58 people that were killed in Aurora. Uh, so, in conclusion, we would see that there is a very uh, um, direct relationship between the uh, number of, or, or between the level of strictness in gun control and the uh, level of um, crime rate uh, pertaining to uh, firearms. Uh, we'd also like to uh, add, uh, on a second note, um, an answer to those who are worried about the industry as a whole, uh, the gun industry. At the end of the day, this is an industry that employs a lot of people, that generates revenue and uh, uh, taxation money. Uh, nobody wants to kill it. Um, but what exactly would be the impact of any ban on assault weapons uh, on the um, gun industry? Um, according to Forbes magazine, there would be an impact, but not really a huge one. Um, and I'm quoting them saying it would only put a dent in this industry. Um, the given example where the uh, cited, for example, uh, a weapon called the Bushmaster AR-15, and this was one of the weapons used in the Sandy Hook shooting. It is manufactured by a group called the Freedom Group, one of the largest and long uh, uh, gun manufacturing firms in America. They believe that, uh, according to the current statistics, the Bushmaster AR-15 represents only 20% of their sales. As such. They still have another 80% of sales, uh, they still have a lot of revenues to make, and um, it, the assault uh, weapon ban would not really impact them, would not shut him down, would not get him out of business. So we have two interesting facts here. Number one, the correlation between a drop in crime rate related to firearms and the level of strictness in the gun control system. 
and we also have a, a fact that rebuttals um, any claim that this would impact the industry financially. In addition to that, we see that uh, the right to bear arms would not really be uh, uh, terribly impacted. Uh, every individual will continue to hold his right to bear arms as long as his request is reasonable, as long as this right uh, can be feasible, as long as those arms are used for protection. And I'm sure, um, you know, we do, there is a limit to the size and number and uh, fatality of, of arms any of us can bear. Otherwise, uh, one of us may, may buy a tank tomorrow or an airplane. Um, in, in, if we're looking at uh, handheld guns for protection, uh, these are not um, going to be infringed upon by the new uh, proposed plan. So as such, I don't see really an issue when it comes to the Second Amendment. So in conclusion, it, like we mentioned, there is a good correlation between the uh, crime rate uh, level and the uh, gun control system in place. And the relationship is, as you've seen, very direct and very clear. Um, last, I would like to end my speech with a call for action. I have personally signed a petition uh, for the Organizing for Action, uh, which is a political, uh, political group. Um, basically, the petition would be sent to Congress bearing the name of everyone who signed, asking them or rallying them uh, to put together tougher gun control measures. Um, I do advise everyone to try to sign the petition themselves. Um, maybe this would make our voice being heard. Um, maybe this would help um, put together a new or, or reinstate an existing law that we may have had before that could help uh, limit the number of incidents that we have with gun shootings uh, where fatalities are very high and also lessen the amount of terror that our communities are suffering every year because of gun shootings. Uh, at the end, I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Um, I hope you did uh, find the speech uh, informative as well as persuasive. Uh, so thank you and uh, good night.